Hi guys, how's it going? Let's just slide this in my pocket and we're off to the races. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We don't need to use a separate display here. Cool, so uh, thanks everyone for coming. We're gonna talk about mock servers today. Um, just so I can get a little bit of an idea, how many people in the room are developers? Awesome, it's a very different turnout than earlier today. Uh, how many people are QA? Okay, does, uh, and does anybody work in uh, product design, project management? Okay, cool, excellent. So um, mock servers actually touch every part of, of your jobs. Like it, it, any, any of the people who I just called out can use a mock server. Um, and Let's talk about what they are. So um, mocks, like, and you're not mocking me, right, as much as people like to make fun of me. Um, they're objects that simulate real world behavior. So uh, uh, basically, we're going to create something that is pretend, right? It's a fake endpoint. And uh, there are a few reasons we want to do that. Um, one. We can isolate behavior. We can see if something's broken on our back end or on our front end. We can um, ease the incorporation of our unit tests. So we can make our testing flow a lot easier. We can, um, def uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, we can even do things like uh, start building before we're even uh, before the product that we're relying on is even finished. So. I already talked about how it's fake, um, but we can. It's also configurable um, in in Postman, so it's uh, you can allow it to return things based on something like a parameter, uh, and you are able to pretty much hit it from anywhere. So we host your mocks for you. So if you, I actually have used a few mocks to just. Uh, I'll show you in a second, but uh, put your uh, put HTML in them, and then you can hit them as a website. So it's a fun way to do a little bit of ad hoc hosting. Um, and I called out earlier that uh, design, project management, testing, um, mocks can help all of those. And we're going to see how. Um, just uh, as an example, this is sort of a flow of what we see in Postman. Um, we help front-end devs by allowing them to start building user interface before they even have to hook up to the back end. We help, we help platform devs by giving them the ability to design their API and communicate around it by creating schema before they even get into an IDE and start building code. And we help QA engineers by doing what I said earlier, um, aiding them to isolate different systems. I know I've had a lot of trouble in the past figuring out whether I broke my database or I broke my front end. Turns out it's both. Um, so let's hop into the demo. And I have to be sorry. Mm. My bad. It's, it does this thing where, oh, here we go. Um, if I, OK, cool. Thank you. Awesome. So let's take a peek at making a mock. Um, so this is Postman. I hope you're all familiar with it. If you're not, download it and become familiar with it. Um, it is pretty simple to make a mock here. Um, all we do is we click on this new button, and we head over to this mock server. Um, the only two things you need to create a mock in Postman are a unique uh, path endpoint and a body. So for this, we're going to do Stockholm mocks. I don't know why I capitalized the H there. And uh, let's say our body is going to be uh, not Stockholm, but Stockholm. Um, and uh, then we're off to the races. We can actually create this. We're going to call this. Um, and uh, so there's a few different ways that you can create mocks. But um, this is the most basic, simplest way. Uh, what happens when you go through this flow is we create a mock server for you and host it on our website. Um, and we also create a collection within Post or a collection and an environment within Postman that um, allows you to basically start interacting with this request. So let's close it. Um, this is the mock I just created. Uh, we'll give you an example of throwing it up there right now and seeing. Oh well, that is. Fine, because I have another one prepared for you. Oh, I was in the wrong. Um, I was in the wrong environment there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but let's look at. So let's look at this. This is a. Uh, this is our Stockholm mock. Um, that is a copy of what we just had. Um, the way that mocks are powered in Postman is through saved responses. So. Um, 
you, when you receive a request in Postman, you're actually able, you're, or receive a response to Postman, you're able to save that. Uh, so uh, in saving that, you, this is what we use to serve out these bodies. So if you see here that um, this request is, um, why is it doing that? Um, uh, this request is uh, basically just, like, and we're actually going to go to default. So it always starts, it always saves the first request under default. Um, basically, here's your message. This is the body you've built out. You can set a status code. Um, say, for example, we're creating Stockholm instead of just accessing it. Um, and then you save it. So uh, there are a few different things you can say there. You see that that's already, um, but now we've changed the status code. Um, beyond that, uh, we can do a few other things that are pretty cool with this. Um, so you, you probably saw a few other examples that were saved in here. Um, I have one endpoint that has a parameter in it, uh, the city parameter, so we're going to look at that. And then I have another endpoint that has um, a different value for that parameter. So um, they each have different bodies, and we're going to see what happens when we change those, um, when we change those bodies. So let's see. Let's send a request to New York. We get a response with the big apple. Um, and then let's send a, res a request to Stockholm, and we should get a response with Sweden for Life. So uh, the potential here is that uh, if you are uh, basically mocking out a, a, an endpoint that does take parameters, you can define a bunch of different bodies in order to um, you know, take advantage of these query parameters. So you can uh, basically access, uh, access these bodies through all these endpoints. Um, what is, so, so you know, what is the utility of all this? Uh, what, what can we really end up doing after, we, after we've created a mock? Um, in some cases, uh, you can do things like uh, host dynamic data. So Postman has an API. Uh, for example, I use this, this mock to uh, uh, host uh, data for visualization. Um, it's, able, it's able to basically serve as um, a data store for me temporarily. Um, in the past, I've used it to, like I said, host websites. Um, and we have all the examples that I talked about earlier as well in terms of isolating things for QA and um, starting build for dev. So uh, let's get back to the slides and talk about just some of, the, some of the things you saw there. So everything that you have in a mock can actually be accessed and interacted with through the environment. Um, I'll, I'll actually go back and show you that in a second. But um, you can config, configure the get post uh, responses as well and um, the headers. And like, I, like you just saw, you can configure parameters. Um, so Postman uses mocks uh, in a uh, API design driven fashion. So one of the first things we do when we set out to create an API is we will both create a mock and we will start documenting it. Uh, from there, we actually start writing code. So before we even set foot in IDE, there is a, a mock that already exists for this endpoint. Um, that really helps, for example, if we're doing something that maybe serves our, our web platform, like our dashboard. Um, there, that means that people are already building on it before we've even built out the functionality. Um, and when we, uh, when we actually check that in, um, mocks are also a thing that can be used to power testing. So you have tests that are validated against mocks for your ideal body, and then you have tests that run against the actual return. Um, if, you know, if you see discrepancies there, then you can kick things back in your, in your uh, deployment pipeline. So uh, that's one of the ways in which we integrate with mocks. Uh, I'll just show you real quick where environments are. Um, so this is the environment. Uh, if, you, if we wanted to define this, like I said, uh, it starts out with just the URL posted in there. But you can also create um, another variable and then uh, give it a value. So we can update that. And then instead of having um, NYC in that example, oops, sorry. instead of having NYC in this example, we can change this to city. And now that will be powered by that as well. So um, that gives you the ability. Oops, forgot to change that. Um, that gives you the ability to um, have a little bit more dynamic scripting uh, because you are able to update those variables on the fly. That, uh, so that about wraps it up for uh, Postman mocks. Uh, our mocks are static, not dynamic. So some, some, uh, some people would be curious as to whether or not you can implement business logic uh, on the mocking side. That's not uh, one of our current offerings, but it is something that we are looking to uh, implement in the future. Um, 
Otherwise, uh, let's get back to our slides and take a quick look at, I think we're just going to give you a summary. So uh, what we've covered so far is uh, mock servers help you emulate responses of services that don't yet exist or that you need to isolate. Um, they need unique URL paths as well as um, resp uh, corresponding response bodies when you set them up. Um, and the same endpoint can return multiple different uh, body or yeah, different response bodies based on the query parameters that you set. And then uh, finally, they're uh, the base for Postman's API-driven development. Uh, they really enable us to be extremely flexible in the entire design and implementation process. Uh, I have a few minutes left, so uh, I, I can take one or two questions if that's okay. Yeah. Does anyone anyone have any questions? Nope. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Paul.